we are we're promoting today iman who is here to talk with us today about how she has grown her freelance business from not a whole lot not a whole lot for being honest not a whole lot there to <laughs> to awesomeness to feeling really confident in having a business and an actual model something to go forward with and build on so oh Shannon also said loved your TCC and IRL talk oh, thank awesome. you I love those Kira and Rob and everybody there it's a good time yeah it really was be, right are you ready to to share with us you ready to I'm walk ready. us through your journey I am ready. Let me get my screen up. Okay. Firstly, hi everyone. I am so excited to be here. Thank you for coming. So as promised, I am going to be talking about how to nail your niche. And I've named this the copywriter's guide to nailing your niche fast. But like Joe said, honestly, this is applicable to any and all freelancers, no matter whether you're a copywriter or not. So let's get started. Um, before I kind of dig deep into this and introduce myself, I want to ask you if you have niched down or specialized. And actually, before I um, before I do, I just want to say, I know in 10XFC, Joe talks about niching versus specialization. And Joe tells you not to niche in 10XFC. So I just want you to know that me and Joe are on the same page. It's yes. just that I have called specialization niching. So I'm using the terms interchangeably here. Um, so tell me if you have um niche or specialized already um so a is a yep b is nope and i'm not sure i should c is not yet but i plan slash hope to we are getting loads of a's and now oh, tons cool. of c's so it's really torn between a and c although there are a couple b's in there a couple of b's you know you may be convinced by the time i finish <laughs> <laughs> nice oh joanna says Iman inspired me to niche to email. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Oh, I love it. Okay, Brill. Okay, so let's let's keep going then. So, hi, I am Iman Ismail. As Joe said, I am an email conversion strategist and copywriter. Over the past year, um, not even a year, honestly, probably eight or nine months, I've worked with some amazing brands. I've written emails for Being Boss, um, Interact, most recently the quiz platform, Belinda Weaver at Copyright Matters. I've written an email for Joe over at Copy Hackers, um, Susie Ashworth, if anyone knows Susie, a big coach in the UK, um, Sheepers, lovely Summer Awares, and I've also done um, workshops for Lloyd's Bank. Today, um, I am really known as an email specialist. When people think about me, they think of email. I run a solely VIP day based email copyright, email copywriting business. I don't do anything else anymore. I only offer VIP days um, and email audits, but I'll get into that in a minute. I charge £3,250 um, per day rate uh, or 4.5k in dollars. This quarter, I made more than I made in an entire year at my old job. <laughs> and the same applies to last quarter as well. I actually just did my tax returns and I was shocked to find that I my revenue from April to April, which is the UK um, tax year, mm -hmm. has increased by 258%. Uh, from right from last April to this April. So it's That's been amazing. a really big year for me. I just had my first five figure launch with an email list of under a thousand subscribers, which I'm super excited about. But I've got to be honest and tell you that things were not always this way, as Joe <laughs> pointed out. So back in September 2018, I just quit my full time job to become a full time copywriter. Back then I was charging 15 pounds an hour. Now I had a lot going on. Um, I had a son who was two at the time and I was having to, to commute to my job um, when I was working that full time job as a communications almost manager for a charity. So I was commuting every day um, for about two and a half to three hours. It was really hard. I was getting home super late. I was out for 12 hours a day, getting home and my son would be asleep every single night. And I was just, I was depressed. I was, I was super depressed and I didn't know how to make things better. I asked my manager if I could work from home a little bit more. He said, no. So that was great. Uh, I asked him for a pay rise as well because I was working evenings and weekends and just not being paid for any of it and thinking this is kind of crazy. Um, to which he said, you can have a pay rise, but not right now. And when I asked him for a certain figure, he said, mm, you're not quite there yet. 
Um, I actually, when I went into freelancing, made the amount that I'd asked him for within that, I think it was within about 11 months. So I was super proud of that milestone because I showed him. Um, but, you know, at that point, I was still charging um, quite low uh, to the point that, you know, well, clients, finding clients wasn't an option. It wasn't the difficulty, sorry. That was never the issue. The difficulty was the fact that I had all these clients um, and I had no more hours to work, but I wasn't, still wasn't making very much. So I had a lot of work to do there. I actually um, worked with Belinda Weaver to um, increase my rates and she helped me do that, which was amazing. However, I was still in the feast and famine mode and I didn't know um, how to get out of that. I kind of was just living in that mode. Like some, some months were amazing. I was holidaying in Malaga, Spain and other months were like, I don't know where I'm gonna find my next client from. Um, so it kind of went on like that until I got to December, 2019 when I decided to specialize in email and I was super excited to do that because I'd fallen in love with email, but I positioned myself as someone who was helping six plus figure online business owners and e-commerce brands fire up their conversions, evergreen their sales and turn fans into super fans. But I had zero access to any six plus figure online business owners or e-commerce brands. And I had no idea how I was going to do any of this. Then COVID hit <laughs> and I had very few clients and um, by May I, I think I had a, had a profit I, I made a profit of like $400 uh, that was that was my worst month by far um, obviously childcare closed I was taking care of my son whilst working full-time it was really difficult but I kept on with the email stuff and by July everything changed Nishin changed everything for me and when I'm looking back now, it's it's been less than a year that I am that you know I have been truly working on this, and I have rebranded as an email conversion strategist and copywriter. I am in the best financial position I've ever been in in my life. Um, obviously, there's always more money to be made, <laughs> but we're working on that. Um, but you know the the drastic changes that have happened over the past year, I think, can really only be attributed to me specialising um, and and really focusing on one area, which is email for me. Obviously, it came with a whole load of hard work, which I don't think I need to go into. Um, but when I really when I really look back, I think it was niching that changed everything. So most people think about niching as the end. So you think about picking your niches. Okay. I've finally picked my niche, this is the end, but actually it's the beginning. And I think there are so many talks and presentations that talk about how to pick your niche and you know how to, how to choose it and the fact that you should have a niche. This presentation isn't going to do that. Today, I'm gonna to talk about what to do after you've chosen your niche so you can nail your niche and do it fast as well. Uh, pandemic or no pandemic. So in this talk, you'll learn the three steps you need to take so you can nail your niche fast. The first one is become your own client. The second is control the narrative. And the third is to streamline your services and your processes. So let's get started on the first one, become your own client. Story time. Keenan and Cal, by the way, was like my favorite thing in the world as a teen. So I had to put them in here. So um, I don't think Jo remembers because she reviews so many, so many people stuff. But when I first decided to specialize in email, I try to you know rewrite my website and I didn't put much effort into it honestly I was working on other stuff and I was like yep this will do I will just submit it it's not the worst thing in the world I mean I know it wasn't amazing but I thought it's not the worst thing in the world so apparently it was <laughs> when Joe looked at this sorry he tore... <laughs> it's okay I needed it I deserved it Joe tore this copy to shreds to shreds and one of the things that Joe said to me was, you know, you have put very little effort into this. And it was, it was true. I'm so embarrassed right now, but it was true. I hadn't because I was focusing on other stuff. And Joe asked me why I wasn't putting um, energy into my own work, but was into, into other things. And she also asked me why I was finding it so hard to write my own website. And if I know my audience correctly, I should find it very easy to, to write my own website. Like it should be the easiest project time I've you know worked on. Um, and so I went back to basics and I went and I started from scratch as if I were doing, you know, writing a website for a client. I started from the very, from the, from the very first stage, doing research, went back to interviews, surveys, the whole shebang. And I now have a website that I'm really, really proud of. But this taught me so much. It taught me that your business and my business deserves your time and respect. You have to stop putting your business last. You have to start putting it first. If you want to be successful in your niche, um, 
your business has to come first, even before clients, right? You need to hire yourself as Joe teaches us in 10XFC because the only other, the, the only other option is to stagnate and make very, very little progress. So you need to block out time every single week for your own business, for your own business growth. And you actually need to stick to it. It's one thing telling yourself, okay, I'm going to stick to, you know, doing two hours here and there for my business or every Thursday, but you actually need to stick to it in order to see growth because this needs to be consistent. I use theme days. Thanks, Joe. Um, and I spend most of Thursdays working on my own stuff and Fridays as well. And sometimes because I have a kid that kind of moves around, but I'm always making sure that I am spending a good deal of time um, growing my own business. I want you to rem remember, and if you don't already know this, I want you to know that all your working hours should not go to clients. Um, you should be blocking out this time for yourself and, you know, blocking out two full days for your own, for your own business stuff is not crazy. I am my own client to the point that, you know, I have this, these folders in my um, Google drive um, says, you know, you go to my drive and then active clients, 2020, 2021 clients. And then we have ink house because that is how much <laughs> I am my own client. I'm currently working with Linda Perry and she said something that really struck, that really kind of struck gold with me. She asked, are you staying in integrity with yourself? Because it's so easy for us to, um, you know, keep the promises that we make to everybody else, whether it's our family, our friends, whether it's our clients. But when it comes to keeping the promises that we make to ourselves, we break them. And they're often the first promises we break. So do not break your own promises to build your own business because your business is the one that will suffer. Number two, control the narrative. Jeff Bezos says your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. I say your niche is what people say you do when you're not in the room. Your job is to control what people say about you when you're not there. So if you think you're an email specialist, but people are talking about your sales pages when you're not in the room, you're really not an email specialist. <laughs> you're more, you're closer to being a sales page specialist. So what can you do to make sure that people see you as the expert that you are in your specific field? First of all, you've got to tell everyone what you do. Everyone. Like I said, when people think Iman Ismail, now they think email. I don't talk publicly about the things that are not related to my niche. You'll only ever hear me talking about email. And that's because I want people to get that message in their heads. I do email. I don't do anything else. I also say no to any other work that comes my way. And a lot of other work comes my way. And sometimes, I'm, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I'm still like, oh, damn, I really want to say yes to that. But you know what the great thing is? I can say yes to it if I want to, but I don't need to tell everyone else. I don't need to tell the whole world that I'm working on stuff that isn't email related. Um, as long as my public facing, you know, thing is email, that's, that's what needs to, that's all that needs to happen, right? So all of this is because you attract what you talk about. So if I talk about emails, I'm going to attract email clients and email projects and speaking opportunities that revolve around email. If I'm talking about blogging and, you know, I don't know, sales pages, that's what I'm going to attract. And then we get frustrated when we get clients asking us to do their blog posts or their sales pages when that's not what we want to do, but it's not their fault. If you've got blog posts in your portfolio, we'll take them down so that people aren't seeing the blog posts that you're writing. Um, if that's not how you want to be viewed, give yourself the label before you're ready, because if you don't, no one else will. I did um, a big pod pod podcast interview called, um, for a podcast called Being Freelance, that's big in the UK for freelancers. And I was not ready to call myself an email strategist and um, copywriter when I did this interview, but I forced myself to, even though I felt like a fraud because I just had a label. I, really, I don't even think I'd had one email client by that point, um, but I knew that this was going out to a whole bunch of people and I needed to control the narrative. And if I did not give myself the label, nobody else would. Last thing on this topic is to manage how people talk about you. So you can control how people talk about you by giving them the language that you want them to use when they're talking about you. So whenever I'm asked to do any speaking opportunities and um, podcast talks, that kind of thing, um, I always send across my media kit and it includes, you know, short bio, a media bio for podcasts and an even media bio for speaker, um, speaker events, right? And this way I tell people how to introduce me so that the people listening are then, you know, um, they know what I want them to know about me, not what the interviewer or the host wants them to know about me. Third, streamline your services and your processes. So RV Webb says, 
do they want your service or our service? I heard him say this and I was like, oh my God, I need to write that down. It's amazing. <laughs> because the thing is, if you're focusing on everything, you won't do anything very well. So think about it. when clients come to you, are they asking you for a service? Like, are you what I like to call a McDonald's drive through where you just, you, you offer anything and everything, right? Or are you very specifically offering service? certain things does a client want your service or just any old service that anyone can offer them right what you need to do is pick two or three core services to offer I mentioned that I only offer two services um actually your whole I do all kinds of emails but I only deliver them as VIP days then the only other thing I do um are email audits now the great thing about niching or specializing is that you don't have to be amazing at everything anymore. That pressure is completely lifted from you. You need to be great at the thing that you are specializing in, which takes a whole bunch of pressure off of you. And the fewer services and offers you have, the better you can deliver those offers and services. So often people say, but won't I make less money if I only offer two or three services? And the truth is you are likely to make more. Here's why. Streamlining your services means you become an expert faster because you just you're doing the same things over and over again you get to charge a whole lot more and love your work a whole lot more because you're no longer working on projects that you hate or that you don't enjoy or that you resent right and you stop resenting clients as well <laughs> that's also the other great thing about niching you save a lot of time and you learn to write a whole lot faster again because you're doing the same things over and over again um last week i think it was i did two thousand pounds nearly three thousand dollars worth of work in about five hours because I had done it so much, I could just do it that quickly. It also means that you can better qualify potential clients. I get on very few sales calls a month, but I know that when I do get on them, I'm likely to close the ones that I do get on. So um, the last time I checked, uh, it was something like two out of every three sales calls that I get on, I close, but I only have like four or five sales calls a month. Um, I have a, a lot more inquiries than that, but I say no to probably like 80 to 90% of people that get in touch with me. Like I don't even get on a call with them. And because of my rates, because I'm an expert and I can charge more, I don't need a million clients a month. I need three for a great month and four for like a let's party month, right? When you streamline your services, you have simplified processes and systems. That means a better customer experience. And that means you can charge higher rates because remember your clients aren't just uh, coming to you and paying you higher rates for you know, the copy that you deliver. It's also the entire experience that you provide. So the three steps to nailing your niche fast are to one, become your own client, two, control the narrative, and three, streamline your services and your processes. The last thing I want to leave you with is that you will never feel ready, but you have to do it anyway. And I mean, there was just so much that I wanted to include in this, like so, so much. Um, I feel like there's a digital product in here somewhere. It's coming eventually, um, but I couldn't fit everything inside. So what I've done is I've created a bonus step that tells you a bit more about how to get new clients in your new niche. So if you want to go get that bonus step, go to bit.do slash tt dash Iman. Thank you. And thanks everybody for coming out for participating so well in chat and asking so many unanswered story questions. Um, we will see you next tutorial Tuesday, which is our last one before we go on summer break. Um, so we'll see you next week to talk about LinkedIn ads. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Iman. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ange. Bye. Bye. Have a good week. Thank you.